Hey everyone, it's TB Shores. It's May the 30th, 2015. I want to pick up where we left off on the last video. We were discussing um, <clears throat> the autumnal equinox. Now remember the reason we were we were brought to this is because the oculus structure that has been constructed at the World Trade Center complex the big white structure that I showed you is called oculus now keep in mind this thing is called they've given it the name oculus but they never refer to it as an eye they call it everything else you can think of but not an eye they mainly refer to it as a flying oh, excuse me a bird in flight uh, there was a reference to um, it looking like a bird being released out of the hand of a child. Um, a winged. Oh, I forget how it called it. <clears throat> but it called it a winged structure. Uh, it refers, several places refer to it as a bird. And like I said, it's all going back to things not being what they seem. They put things right in our face and tell us it's one thing and call it another and we just walk right past it like it doesn't even matter. That's the whole point. That is why Satan can bring about so many things because mankind has just closed their eyes to the things of Satan and walk right past it like it's normal. Okay. <clears throat> When we see that the the oculus, the new white structure there at the World Trade Center, we see it specifically stated that it was designed to maximize, uh, to get the maximum effect of the sun's rays on the autumnal equinox. Okay, I did a search on meaning of autumnal equinox, and the very first thing in my search was this right here. The spiritual meaning of the autumnal equinox. Okay, remember we were looking at this here. It is a breastplate. Remember the Horus, the eyes of Horus was right here and right here. And one of these figures represents, it's supposed to represent Horus on one side, the god of light, and on the other, the god of darkness. So we can see that <clears throat> in ancient times, Satan was trying to depict himself is the God of light even then? And we're fixing to see that play out again and what's about to come upon this earth. But what the Lord wants me to point out, and it's very important that we understand what all is connected to this eye and why that is significant. Okay. <clears throat> we saw here that the spring, excuse me, the autumn equinox is connected to the eye of Horus. We also see that it says that it is the time of balance between day and night before night takes over and brings the coming winter, a time of darkness and death. And it goes on to say this duality between light and dark exists within humanity and in the work of spiritual transformation. Okay. Those of us that have eyes to see and ears to hear ought to understand the significance of what that is saying. And it is a connection between light and dark. Okay. Having said that, we're going to go here. It's more about the eye of Horus. Now, we've seen the eye of Horus is connected to the oculus at the World Trade Center. The Lord wants us to understand all about <clears throat> the connections with this eye. That's what he's got me working on now. And like I said, I cannot cover all the details. There's just too many, too many trails to go on. And I'm trying to discern what best connects the dots that he's trying to show. But we need to keep in mind, we see the eyes connected to the World Trade Center, which we have seen is the seat of Satan and how Satan has mimicked the things in the scriptures in so many different ways 
with just within what sits around the World Trade Center in New York City, not to mention throughout the country. Remember, we talked about east to west and that Satan also have has a seat of idols um, in California, specifically with Hollywood. Um, it's all about him having made this country from east to west a country of iniquity and sin. Remember, we looked at the scripture about how God had removed our transgressions as far as east is from the west, and we've seen how Satan mimics that, mocking God by creating transgressions and iniquities throughout the whole country from east to west. And he primarily set up a seat in New York and a seat in California <clears throat> to demonstrate what he's trying to proclaim there. Okay, so we clearly see the eyes connected World Trade Center. It is connected to the dollar. Let me show you. Let me see. Where's it at? Uh, I think it's further down on this. Okay, here. Here we see. I'm not going to get into all the reading, but, you know, this is just about some things it's connected to. It's connected to ancient Egypt. It's connected to our dollar. It's connected to our medical symbol. See, this snake is supposed to represent the DNA strand. Okay, and then of course we're back to this again. This is about the eye of Horus and how it is connected to the pineal gland. We're going to talk about that. Now a lot of people when we get into the subject of the pineal gland, they, they think we're getting into taboo and promoting new age religion. I am not promoting new age religion. Yes, it is taboo, but we need to understand that what Satan is fixing to do to mankind uh, can clearly be seen in, in understanding the basics of how the New Age religion thinks. And it's all about the spiritual awakening, the spiritual awareness, um, and this higher consciousness that, that they think think they know something about and it, it is absolutely Satan is deceiving them and it all has to do it all goes back to how CERN will affect people on an individual level now I'm not going to get into not at the moment the Lord hadn't led me there he has got me focused on how CERN affects us mankind on an individual level, he wants people to understand what is going on. Okay, I'm going to blow this up just a little. And we're going to look at, at it a little bit deeper. As you see here, this, this is the symbol of the eye of Horus. And you see how it's labeled? Okay. We come over here, and we see the labeling on the brain. Okay, I want to point out, now that in this drawing, right here, is the pineal gland, also known as the thalamus, okay? We come over here, thalamus, right here, okay? Alright, I'm not going to get into the rest of it, but it's all symbolized within the brain. You can go look at it. I will leave the links below. But, um... The whole point of bringing this up is so that you can understand that this, this eye connection all goes to the pineal gland. And it's about how they can affect the pineal gland, okay? Um, I'm, right now, I want to show you what the Lord showed me because I was asking him about CERN. And this is what he brought me to understand okay you got to keep in mind i was just approaching the lord seeking understanding on cern and the lord asked me what comes to mind and the first things that came to my mind because it's the only words that i know with cern in it 
are discern and concern. If we look at the word discern, we see it means to detect with senses other than vision. So it's about a, a special sense of being able to, and we look here, to examine closely, to filter. Filter means to remove impurities. So it's about a sense that lets us pick up on things that are not of God and be able to discard them so that we only see or focus on the things that are pure and of God, okay? But if we look at this in another sense, we see, the. remember, we looked at how this is about the light and the dark. One thing you need to understand about the pineal gland is it is affected by light and by dark, okay? So we're looking at the light and the dark aspects of what's going on here. Now, if we look at the flip side of the coin, the dark aspect of this, I learned that the, the word CERN, the second part of this word, because this is a prefix, the word CERN comes from a Latin word, CERNIR, I guess that's how you pronounce that, CERNIR which means sift. And we know sift means to separate. But something else I want to point out about sift is this right here. The Lord brought me to this scripture. And this is where the Lord was talking to Peter. And he said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Okay, what the Lord's talking about here, he's not talking about refining as we know sifting to be of the Lord, to be of the light. Sifting of the Lord is about removing the lumps and refining us. The sifting of Satan is about breaking down, about grinding up. It, it doesn't have a good meaning, okay? So what the Lord is showing here is with CERN, Satan wishes to sift. Just as the scriptures tell us, Satan wishes to sift. Sift you as wheat. And when we see sift you as wheat, the first thing that comes to my mind is the harvest. This, I think, is telling us that when it comes the time of the harvest time, Okay, we know, we've looked in past videos, we've looked at how the barley is the head, the wheat is the body, the barley is the bride, the wheat, which is the body, is the guest of the wedding. Okay, and the wheat have to go through extra refining by the Lord to be brought in their hearts where they need to be to join the rest of us, okay? But Satan wishes to sift the wheat to break them down and to grind them up. He wishes to destroy them, not refine them. God refines. Satan does not. So it's about the wheat being the ones that will be sifted. Okay? Now, this sifting by Satan will bring about God's refinement um, for many because many will, will turn to the Lord during this time. I wanted to point that out as well. God will use it for his glory. Okay, but we get back to the words discern and concern. And we see that the Lord is showing us that there is something to be learned from these two words. Now, we see this. It says, discern to detect with senses other than vision. Concern, anxious sense of interest, uneasy or burdensome state of mind. So it's to be concerned over something. We know what it is to be concerned over something. It 
it kind of weighs on us because it affects us in some way. Um, I'm going to cut this off. It's getting a little long and pick this back up in the next video. Bye-bye.